All right, jabronis. So on this one, this isn't uh, super high priority on the list, but obviously want to get the window working and figure out what's going on. But I'm taking advantage of the timeliness of having a Discovery One in the junkyard right now. It has a, if I remember right, reasonably intact uh, passenger rear door because I want to get at least the screw and the trim there. It may be in there, but um, I'm going up to the junkyard anyways. So this also doubles as how to get the door card off and potentially the window regulator assembly out of a Land Rover Discovery One passenger rear door. So we have two 10 millimeter bolts holding it on here. Clearly someone's been in here. Looks like we need a bolt for there too. Man, this thing is just so slick together. So, glad we checked, because we need extra hardware too. And these are pretty long bolts, and I don't love what's going on right now, but you'll see. Okay. So this is, I remember from working on another one, this is the original piece of hardware, I believe. Put that aside, there should be two, as I said. This has already been lifted up, but this piece of trim here comes up and out. It is nice that that is included. Get that done there as well. And then from here, oh, you know what? Let me go get my handy dandy trim tool. You'll see once they're out, but every so often there is a piece of. Uh, there are some plastic clips, as is common for these. There you go. So that's the sound of it disengaging and not breaking, hopefully. Yep, that one came out good. Where's the next one? So there, oh, there's another one. Ah, uh, no. Okay, that one broke off. Now, I can't remember if there is a... If you lift up on these, or if it's just the dog, I'm getting your way here. And you can't; these are easy to get and replace. But if you're careful, you can generally reuse them. I think this is up on a. There we go. So, okay, good. They're all intact. So as you can see here, these just hung on and popped off of here. What you really want to be careful of is these black piece, black pieces once they come off. Also going to need the lock cap here, unless that's just falling inside. But these little guys here, if you're careful, you can reuse them. But you can't. I mean, you can get a pack of twenty on eBay for pretty much nothing. But and I do have a bunch of spares. So this is exactly the kind of quality craftsmanship you want to look for uh, when you uncover stuff. This isn't even, so I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to use a wooden block to prop up the window, but maybe it slipped behind. I actually, okay, to the, give them a little credit, I think that is what happened. Rather than just fix the doggone thing, they stick a piece of wood in, resting it on the mechanism here. And then I did also find Let's see if I can... You saw the window switch was pulled through. I did find it. It was just uh, tucked away down here. But look what else was down here. You see that down? Well, okay. I can get a good angle on it. Um, how long has that been hanging out in there? And what was it doing? Oh boy. So what we're looking to do here is take out the window regulator assembly. Make sure everything's all hunky-dory. This window switch is kind of crusty. I actually do have another one. It's almost feels like the rocker. I think it's pushed in. Maybe someone just jammed on it. 
it's not very happy. So there you go. Going back up north to the junkyard to get some goodies here. I'm probably just going to grab everything I need. Upon further investigation, this thing is just so screwed up. So this was... I should have taken a picture of it. This was pressed up. See those those scratches down there? Down now. Uh, down yonder. So this was partially attached to yeah, it must be like that. To the back of this. Pried back and look how rusty this is. Pried back and was scraping against the wall. I believe it's supposed to go here. Something like maybe through the back. So right off the bat, this I don't know if it's the safety lock or what. This this wasn't working on the inside, which is, pro which is probably why it was all jammed up. And the window regulator isn't working, and the switch was broken. This The previous owner, or someone in the history of this vehicle, either had a very angry child or a very angry adult, not that there's too much of a difference, and just smashed on this. So I'm kind of... My instinct is to say just take the entire freaking door from the junkyard, but I don't want to have to deal with spending like 300 bucks on that and then piece parting it out, so... I know I need to pop this off. These three, I think... Looks like you can bring these two loose and then probably take these out and the whole assembly will shift up. This whole thing is loose. I don't know from where, but there is a... Looks like hardware is supposed to be in there. You can see that there's an open hole there, which is obviously just above that opening. So, I think I'm just going to go to the junkyard, spend a couple minutes pulling everything apart. I know what tools I need, I think, and fight with it there. And if I don't get it out, then I've just burned a little bit and I've learned more about it. And I'll just buy one new. But every stone I turn over on this thing, big surprise, more work. All right, guys, here's the post op. So, windows out, down there, fully extended, got the regulator in place. And in digging through all the garbage down there, I found this piece, which I suspect, I can't go through here very well, but uh, if you look at this, this is just a small piece, but I suspect this indeed. So this, I believe, lived happily for many years in this track, along with its 50% uh, counterpart. Regu window motor activates, slides up, slides down, moves this arm up and down, thus bringing the window up and down. So, seeing that it's just one piece of nylon, a little wear, or, you know, some kind of nylon plastic reinforced plastic. I'm a little nervous that the one in the junkyard isn't going to be much better. But uh, I, I think I'm going to check it out just once again. Strike while the iron's hot. Strike while there's one there. But, of course, anytime root cause analysis, you want to run through everything that actually took place. There we go. What you'll notice is this orange wire. Well, Half of it's here, part of it's here. The other half got pulled into the door tether. This one here almost suffered a similar fate, but just got super chewed up. So we have some wiring to repair. Since I've gotten this disconnected, I think what I'll actually do is pull it back through the door, maybe? Through the harness there. That way I have the full length I can work with and I can repair that. So that two pin goes to the lock. This five pin goes to the switch. And this goes to the motor itself, which has a second piece here, which this is actually a pretty loose fit. Um, it's just pressure fit on. There's no clip or bayonet or anything. It's just, yeah. So that's a story on that. I think I know enough to be dangerous now. I'm going to get this whole assembly with lever 
get as much of this as I can just to make sure that I have extras. And I don't know, I think that's fairly complete. There are, there's missing hardware here and here. So I'm going to grab those as well as one here, I think. And then I believe there is also a piece that goes there as well. So that's the plan. Once again, we're... There's always more. You start digging in and it just gets worse and worse. I may even just clip that harness um, and take that off with me too. But next step is heading back up north. So hope you guys learned something. Uh, the lesson being don't buy stupid old crap like this. It's a huge waste of time. But we'll see what we can make out of it. Okay, so I prepared the connections here. I stripped the ends of the wire on each. You want to do the same amount on each wire. I prefer soldered connections. Uh, they're just they're they're compact. They have really good continuity, but uh, For automotive applications a lot of times you are better off using a crimp connection I'll be using a crimp connection here The one thing you want to make sure of is you get your heat shrink on the wires before you connect them And so what I'm going to be doing here Using this crimp connection you want to use the smallest size that will fit over the wires that you have So this is the red is typically the smallest size. That's a good fit there even a little bit looser than I like, but it's certainly going to fit just fine. Um, so you've got your heat shrink here. You've got both, you know, we've got two connections here. So we have four ends of our wires prepped. I'm going to use a ratcheting style crimper. This is the only kind of crimper I use. So the way it works here is you crimp it down and it just incrementally uh -huh, crimps down until it gets to its limit and it holds it and then you overextend and it opens up. So what I'll do is I, you can see there's a little bit, there's a wider portion and a narrower per portion. The narrower portion is what has the actual metal inside it for that connection. So I set it up just on the very edge of it. And then I go just, the nice thing about the ratcheting crimper is you get it on that first, first level and it'll hold it for you much handier. And so we will feed this through as far, I go as far in as it'll go until you can feel the insulation hitting against the metal. It's kind of hard to show here, but I can feel it stopping. So like sliding in and that the insulation is now sitting against the steel or the metal inside. And then you crimp it down and it's overextended and then opens off. Now, if you look here, rather than just the crimp that kind of presses right in the middle, you have two shoulders, and you can see how much it's compressed in there. You see that? So that's a really nice connection. So I'm just going to do that four more times. Uh, you do want to be careful. So I did exactly half of it. It's starting to close, but you can see the opening for this wire. There's plenty of room for it to go in. So, and at orientation, this isn't essential, but... Just for wire lay, I'm really obsessive about wire lay. Big surprise. So just the way that they're oriented, I like, you know, orange on top. You could just easily, you know, set it up however you want. But just the way the wire is kind of biased, you can see here, it's got the curve in this direction. So I'm going to go ahead and replicate that and just put, you know, hold this wire pretty tight so it doesn't rotate. And then feed it through, same thing. Push until the shoulder, get a little bit of view here. The shoulder has gone into, just into the steel here and the metal on the inside. So I know it's as, as far in as it'll go and it's got good connection. Same thing here, slowly ratchet down, two hands fully crimp and there, overextend. Nice. There you go. And I'll use, I usually use my Nipix pliers, but this will work too. So there's a, a wide opening at the top and I'll just do a further compression, just a little, just to flatten it out more. Same thing on the back. Now, as you can see, the heat shrink will still fit over it, but I'm going to do the next con connection first. All right, so we got both done here. This is another, oh man, I should have just done that before. Another example of my favorite pliers in the entire world, my Nipix. There's a couple different sizes. And I just do a little, little press. 
And I'll also, in any kind of gaps here, I just do a little squeeze. That way you really, really, really know. There we go. That you have a really good pressed, squeezed in connection. Give it a tug. Doggone it. See? There you go. That's why you do the tug test. That would have been fine. I probably just tugged too hard on it. Next step is we take our heat gun, make sure that these are centered. Just a little pinch test so you have the same amount of excess on either side of the connection. Take your handy dandy heat gun of choice. Look at that. Oh, oh, it's magic. Okay, we got one side. Let's give it a little flip. Oh yeah, she just shucks right down on there. Blocking the view, jerk. Okay, that should be good. Ow, it's hot. Ow, it's hot. Ow, it's hot. Okay, so what we'll do now is feed this back in and I'll change the camera for that. I'll check in once I'm done. Backtracked a little bit. Uh, next thing I did just to tidy it up a little bit more, I got these kind of squared up against each other and I just put a, put a loop around this so it's less likely to catch on stuff as it goes in and as it's just rattling around. Uh, I'll show you in a second why this happened in the first place and it was because someone had been messing with this i don't know if it was from the window regulator or something else but these wires were all hanging loose right inside this hinge here there's actually a tether up inside the door that the whole wiring harness is supposed to fit into that they did not fit it back into and as such with just flopping around it caught in the door pull and broke and probably caused a little pop and blew a fuse so we'll dig into that way down the road when this vehicle is actually up and running but yeah just a little tidy up and i'll weave it through and show you in a second Okay, okay, I know, I know. Not going to the junkyard anymore, but new information came to light about the rear window. Regulator was messed up and missing some parts. So, or the passenger rear window. So I got that. Also, while it was in there, I got the door lock, the electric lock assembly. I also just got the whole door latch assembly just to be safe. Some of the, these parts were missing. This was janky. So I discovered in digging into it today that I needed more parts. So that's why I went back out. Things like this was missing. I didn't have one, so I got that. This is just a piece of uh, a gasket that closes the gap between the radiator and the body. This is a piece of one of the few things I've sold multiple multiples of on eBay pretty quickly. So clearly that's a desirable piece. It's filthy, but we got this mat, just an aluminum bracket. These may just end up going right back the next time because... I just want to make sure that I had them. I needed to double check. There's a bunch of interior passenger rear door hardware, as well as door latch parts that were broken or missing. Window switch working. Nice good clicks there with the rear bracket, which was missing. This is broken on Jimmy. And then the bumper and that trim are actually for our friend over here, the red disco. Because it wasn't until I had a, uh, a straight bumper that I realized how bent that one actually is. I have replaced both of these rear lights, but uh, that's actually pretty significantly bent if you look at it. So, figured may as well get a nice OEM one from the junkyard. We're going to lose our beloved Columbia Overland sticker, but that's okay. We didn't put it on. It should also square these up a little bit, but yeah, so that'll be a nice improvement there. And also got a bunch of hardware, including hardware for the spare tire mount, which I didn't have, a bunch more engine hardware, door retainer hardware, passenger door trim hardware, headlight adjuster, um, just of course a fun little tow hitch thing. But yeah, there you go. Oh, and of course this terrible, terrible carpet. Uh, oh, and the weather barrier for the passenger rear door. But yes, this terrible, terrible, nasty carpet. I moved like 
15 spare wheels, junk wheels and tires, out of the bed of it. Uh, oh, and a Land Rover OEM mirror, which will fit better than the one that's in the Red Discovery. But yeah, this terrible nasty carpet is carpet that matches from the exact vehicle, so we'll clean it up as best as we can. It's actually exactly what I did for the red one too, that was missing. So, a stained carpet is better than no carpet, I think. Maybe.